Listen, if you've been following this saga, the dabble verse, John versus us versus everybody, uh, it's quite a story. Well, this guy that's coming on today, he knows a thing or two about stories. Mm -hmm. He was, um, for, for people our age, I'm sure you were a wrestling fan during the Attitude Era. Everybody was. How could you not? It, it was the greatest time in wrestling between what was happening on WWE and what was happening on WCW, the back and forth, the realism, the, the, the storylines were out of control. Mm -hmm. And this gentleman was the genius behind it. And he has put in writing, and I quote, in a million years, I couldn't come up with storyline like this. <laughs> and that was such a compliment from this mm -hmm. guy because he's Ooh. thought of everything. He is a genius. The man. And dare I say, the muse behind the BS show. Am I right, Bob? Yes, yes. Because he's a mega Stern fan for years. He's the reason why you saw uh, Jeff Jarrett smash Beetlejuice with a guitar. He's the reason why Nicole Bass got to wrestle on TV. Not great, but I mean, she got to go on TV. And, well, it's whatever. Yeah. This guy, genius, and, and honored to call him a friend. Ladies I got two people. words for you. Vince fucking Russo. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Bro, I got to tell you guys, forget all that. Forget it. Bro, this to me, and I know you guys can relate. Uh -uh. Bro, this is, this is like... I feel like the young comedian who's getting a call up to the Carson show, bro. Like th this is the Carson show with you guys. And bro, I've been watching this story from afar for months. Everybody's channel. What's going on. And bro, yeah. I think he here's the good thing about me on this show. I think forget me, bro. Forget all that. You're going to have the point of view of somebody that's kind of been on the outside because you you guys seem to have, you know, round robin, man. You keep changing, you know, guests and this and that, and it's it's always the same people. Bro, I could tell you, man, I've been sitting back watching this for months, and, uh, man, there is so much I have to say about this. Well, it, it's great because uh – -huh. and, and normally we have guests on in the second hour, but I said, you know, I want to – I yes. want to have Vince on for the start so we can fill him in on anything he doesn't know. Catch him up on where we're at. Uh, uh, you know, you, what was it saying? How it started, how it ended, you know? Uh, so <laughs> so we, we are at a, a crossroads now. Um, you know, John, for whatever reason, uh, went after me when I wasn't, I, I was still working at the Stern Show, spread a lot of ugly rumors, uh, tried to get me fired. And I did nothing to the guy. I never knew why he did it. I never forgot about it, but I just moved on. Uh, he tried to interview me in L.A. when the Stern Show was out there. I, I, you know, I've always remembered what this guy has done. Uh, Carl Hamburger, the uh, man behind Who Are These Podcasts, a great show. Uh, does a great. Um, he he was doing segments on John throughout his show. And he asked me numerous times, you want to come on? You want to trash him? And I go, no, no, I'm going to take the high road. I'm going to take the higher. Like an idiot. Like an idiot. <laughs> and then yeah, Chili just got high instead of taking the high road. <laughs> exactly. I go, who? I, I was confused. <laughs> uh, and then finally, we, I said, fuck it. Let me just speak my piece and get it off my chest. And literally the first episode was just me talking about John and what an asshole he was. I think the second episode, we played his stand-up. By the third episode, Levy was on, and then everything just clicked as far as, like, let's just put on an episode of his shit and roast him on the spot. That's it. We don't go, you know, he can sit here and tell all the stories he wants. We don't fuck with his personal life. Mm -hmm. We don't tell people to fuck with his personal life. The only thing we do is goof on what he puts out by hitting go live. That's yeah. it. It's his choice at the end of the day what goes out there. Yeah, John, listen, I, I I mean, truly, listen, I do something very, 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 very similar. And and it doesn't come from from hatred. It right. comes from a place of, uh, you know, strictly entertainment. And I think I, we'll appreciate this. Bro, Tony Khan is my stuttering, John. 
Right. And right, we, right. I cannot talk enough about Tony Khan. I cannot see enough scrums. If, if Tony Khan ever decided to leave the wrestling business, I would be absolutely crushed. <laughs> yeah. Plus the entertainment value. I don't think people understand that. I never met the guy. And for people that don't know, Tony Khan is the uh, he's the own the billionaire owner of yeah. the uh, competitive competitor to the WWE AEW. But this guy is comedy gold. So yeah. like, I completely understand. I don't think you guys hate stuttering John, you know, for one second. But <laughs> watching that show, you guys being professional comedians, you can't leave that alone. No, no, there's too much. There's too much meat on that bone. <laughs> there's you know? too much meat on the bone. But, yeah. but Julie and Bob, I got to ask you this because – I, I want to like. I really want to understand the roots. Go ahead. Because if you say Shuli, he really started dogging you uh, yeah. when you were on the Stern show. You have to have an idea of why. Was, so, was, was he was was there hope of him getting back on the show when he thought Shuli had the stuttering John spot? What do you think the root of it was? I think I this is my take because he's never it will never yeah. get the actual story because he can't yeah. be this honest with himself or with whatever's happening. But in my opinion, he's gone from the show. He sees a guy now working for the show and involved with the show that he used to pick up the phone and put on hold. Right. And so now he in his ego driven mind is he's going, How did this guy get to where I was? Right. It's all why why him and not me it's the show's getting horrible oh i can't believe they got it's that like that kind of thinking i believe which is odd because he's the same guy that would that would come into the studio after jeff the drunk would call in and go howard i put that call up you know so so he's a guy that will take the rub from something that goes well so why couldn't you sit there and go hey man I know that guy from when he was a caller. Like he, he was always coming up with ideas. Every time I check him on hold, he'd have something else to go to. You know, he hustled. He, he, he gave it a shot. He doesn't have that in him. He doesn't have that in him. It's, it's not, it's not in his cards to be complimentary of anybody else because it gets in the way of complimenting him. Yeah, no, I, I, I know a lot of characters uh, in the wrestling business that we can get into that are the very same way, whereas they won't look in the mirror. A lot, they, of, they, Johns, they, a lot of Johns. A lot rest. of Johns, bro. Yeah. We'll get into that. They they just won't look in the mirror. Yeah. It's always you did this. You did that. You know, now what now what about Bob? Because to yeah. me, like, listen, listen, Shuli, I, I can understand why people hate Shuli because Shuli <laughs> will chew. Yeah, he will chew, he will chew you up and spit you out and not think twice about it. And yeah, bro, you're going to have a problem with a guy like this. Mm. But I mean, I look at you know reverend bob's like uh, saint freaking bob like so so bob what's what's your story like how can he possibly hate you oh well it started when uh i, I caught a few episodes that julie and izzo were doing and mike and i, I was yeah. like i i finally came in i go this, this is funny and they're like why don't you come by one time and i go they do we just roast them live and that's what you do you know as a comedian i said okay I came in, I got a message from John on Twitter, uh, basically said, how can you do this? Uh, you know, after all I've done, I thought, whatever I the hell. we were friends, you know. I that we were friend. Then he started hit me up with uh, the fake him, you know what I mean? With the fake ones the, uh, that he sock had. Accounts. He has sock yeah. accounts. And, on and they got meaner and meaner. And then they he started attacking my wife uh, with those. Uh, and it's totally him, you know. How can you be a Democrat, uh, a Republican? Uh, they're all pieces. Right. It's, it's basically him, and and right. calling her ugly and all, you know, stuff that whatever he says to women all the time. And then and I, think, I remember the story that came up. She brought up a story about how when we had a fight before we were married, I think, or when we were married, I don't even know. And he, uh, we, we it looked like we were breaking up. We were just having a bad time. We had a fight on Twitter, which everybody does. And, uh, and sure. basically, uh, he, he asked her to stay over for three days and she basically turned him down and he <laughs> called her a cunt and fucking like shit like that. And, you know uh, you do and that. more, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bob's yeah. move, first of all. And second of all, he waits, he sees that Bob and his girl at the time, now his wife, broke up. Mm -hmm. And and instead of instead of just maybe leaving it alone, not getting involved, or or if you're actually friends with Bob, go, hey man, sorry, see what's happening. Sorry yeah. you're going through this, whatever. Instead, he DMs Bob and says, No, hey, he called me. He oh, called, he called me. you. And he asked him in the middle, what's her body like? Because I can't see in the pictures her, bo her body. <laughs> and, then, and Bob's kind of, you know, Bob's on pills at the time. He's fucking, uh, he's a maniac. He's on Twitter trashing his, his girl. Uh, and Bob's like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give. So he reaches out to her. He doesn't go, hey, let's talk sometime. Let's go grab coffee. He goes, would you be up for staying three days with me in L.A.? <laughs> and I told, I told Bob, I said, He's this is his thought process. He's looking at her and he's uh -huh. going, Well, if she'll fuck him, she'll definitely. Fuck him. Uh -huh. Hey guys, thanks for watching that clip. Hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, don't care. But I do want to tell you if you want to support, hit the join button down below. Get in there, be a member, check out the archives. There's a lot of great stuff. Enjoy the Shuli Network. What a horrible name. <laughs>